So, so talking about volume, let's dig in there a little bit. So you, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to measure or quantify volume. I think in a, a muscle building standpoint, just using like hard sets tends to, to work pretty well. What's a, what should we, what should we be looking at for hard sets per muscle group per week for someone who wants to optimize muscle building? So th this is always a question that's asked and then bandied about so people again, love to get these uh hard recommendations i want to make sure that the point comes across is that it's going to vary volume in particular something i've carried out a number of studies on this as well as colleagues of mine and we just see very large individual inter-individual uh variations in terms of response where some people mm -hmm. can can get very nice responses with lower volumes and other people with higher volumes and the other i think important thing is that and this goes for all of the variables in general, is that it's not necessarily a binary decision that you have to have choose a certain number of sets. It well may be now there's no research, unfortunately, to date on this, but that periodizing volume, uh, I've, uh, I'd like to see a study like that carried out. It's a challenging study to carry out just because of the time that it would take and the manipulation. But Ultimately, would there be a benefit to, let's say, gradually increasing uh, volume across a, let's say, a given uh, mesocycle and then having a deload or, you know, a active recovery, whatever it is, and then starting that over again? Um, certainly there might. There's a good logical rationale for it because the body can be very um, resi uh, resilient to uh, large stresses for short periods of time, but when a large stress, a high stress is imposed over longer periods of time, the body ultimately breaks down. And that's, I mean, in, in different areas that you can have emotional breakdowns with large stress and, mm -hmm. but with, with training, it's the overtraining uh, syndrome is, so you don't overtrain if you do a large amount of volume for, let's say two consecutive days. Mm -hmm. If you did the same very large volume for two weeks in a row, let's say you're doing 50 sets for you, you know, for 50 sets of squats, I'm throwing out ridiculous numbers, yeah. here. but two weeks in a row, you're going to overtrain. So, and, and different people will overtrain at different rates. So we've kind of uh, come, uh, there's a uh, general guideline that we've developed. I just collaborated on a uh, uh, position stand for the IUSCA on hypertrophy with some great colleagues of mine. Uh, some of the top people in the field. And we came up with a, and this has been bandied about before, but a very general range of somewhere between 10 to 20 sets uh, per muscle. But again, it doesn't have to be the same every week or every month or whatever. It doesn't have to be somewhere. It doesn't have to be the same for every muscle group. I mean, mm -hmm. I so personally, I'm of the belief that uh, you have to look at not necessarily the same thing for each muscle, but the total amount of, of volume that you can do for all the muscle groups combined, uh, and then look to use your volume more wisely for muscle groups that are lagging. So have more volume, generally the reason that, or generally a strategy for improving lagging muscle groups is to increase volume. I'd also say the type of exercise is gonna enter into it. Is it free weights versus machines? Is it single joint versus multi-joint? Uh, you know, uh, large volumes of squats are going to crush you a lot more than large volumes of uh, lateral raise. Yeah. So, so the, again, it's a topic that's quite nuanced. And um, I, I did give a, I'm, I'm giving people what they want, or we yep. are when we're, we're giving a kind of general broad guideline, but that should not be considered any be all end all. And there are people that do very well with lower volumes than that. And on, in cases there's, there's people that need more. And, and again, certainly uh, it should be utilized. It shouldn't be thought of as every muscle has to have the same amount of volume it, to me, at least to me, that it should be utilized in a um, muscle group specific context based upon someone's um, weak points and, and strong points. Yeah. So you can almost set it up how, how I kind of like to do it is periods of time throughout the year, you can have almost like specialization cycles where it's like, Hey, right. there's going to be a couple muscle groups or movements or whatever, where we're going to be yeah. on that high end, maybe even a little above that end, but that doesn't mean everything's going to stay high. So we bring it high for a couple muscle groups, bring it a little bit down for everything else. Exactly. Uh, the way I like to, uh, 
to, to give the analogy is consider it like a budget. If you have a certain amount of money to spend over time, if you're going to blow all your money on buying an expensive car, you might not have enough for food. So, uh, you know, if you have, let's say, your volume budget for all your muscle groups, apportion it to the more towards the muscles that are, are more unresponsive and you don't need as much for the muscles that do. So you can stay within that budget. 